Hey, y'all good? How y'all feeling, man? I know it's some crazy times going on right now. I know that, you know, shit, the, the, the country's burning. Our desire and fire in us is raging, and I just wish and, and pray that your family is whole, that you are, are blessed and safe. Um, if you have loved ones that have been affected, just know that there are options for you. Um, people are raising all types of money for bail and things of that nature, but y'all got to stay safe. But today, I want to lift our spirits a little bit. I want to take you on a, on a trip down memory lane. I want to inspire you, one of the greatest architects in hip-hop ever. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my brother, Dave. Any applause in the comments? I need a round of applause in the comments as this man comes to the... Hello? I need a round of applause in the comments. Damon Dash. <laughs> What's happening, bro? Well, that was the How are you? Oh, no, nah, you know, it's my 35th birthday invitation. This is my 35th oh, wow. birthday invitation. I didn't get one of those. You didn't get one? No. Oh, sorry. Well, I have one I'll send you for, me for memory's sake. Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> What's happening? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? I'm good, man. Just just trying to stay balanced, trying to uh, inspire our people. Um, you know, just for, you know, boys are good. Jessica's good. Everybody's good, man. The fam good. The baby's good. Yeah, everything everything's good. We all healthy. You know, Rocky's right here. She good. Rocky. Hey. We over here working. Nicholas, say hi. Hello. Hey, gang. We just work. Happening? We just working. Awesome, man. Well. Oh. I want to give you your flowers, Dame. You are one of the pi pioneers of how to really get it. You know, when they talk about sticking the, uh, the industry up for what they did to the cold crush, I think you have been a shining example on how to monetize our music and our culture. Um, and I want to take it back, man. You were 16. I think you, you, you famously said you put yourself in school at an early age. Um, God bless your mom. She passed when you were 15 years old. But when did you start getting it and, and put yourself through uh, high school, Dan? Well, yeah, when I was about 16, um, when I was 15, my mom's died. And I got real heavy in the street. And it got critical. You know, people were doing things that I didn't really want to do. And I felt it was a good time to uh, honor my mother's memory by, you know, living and, you know, kind of being great because she worked her whole life to make sure I was. That's right. And I had an opportunity through the boys' club, because I used to box at the boys' club, to go to boarding school, but I just used to get homesick. But, you know, my mom was that, had died, so I was like, fuck it. So I, I went to boarding school in Connecticut, and um, then I came back, got my GED, because then, you know, things got hot and heavy in the street. I didn't go back to boarding school for that last year. And then I just invested in myself and the, uh, you know, doing the music thing. That's crazy, man. I know hustling's in your DNA. When when did the streets turn into a passion for music? Did you hear my record, Hustlers in My DNA? Did you hear that record? No. My rock record? No. Wow. Uh, Nicolette, send them over Hustlings in My DNA right now. You know I'm in the rock, my rock band. Yeah, right? for sure. For band. sure. We all follow you, brother. We, oh, we are that's here. Funny. The, the senator, the senator wrote that record. Uh, Eddie Middleton wrote the record "Hustlers in My DNA." He was like saying it on stage, and we turned it into a record. Wow, it's funny you said that. Yeah, but it definitely yeah. is. So, so when did when did it turn from hustling to music? I mean, that was still hustling to me. But you know, around you know, if you saw "Paid in Full," you know, I could have actually made that um, movie from my personal experience, and that experience scared me into not wanting to hustle. It wasn't sustainable. And I automatically got into the music business just as a way to be making the same kind of money I was making hustling, but to do it legal. I love it. And people don't really know before you started Rockefeller Records, you were actually managing Jay and you guys did a deal with Payday, right? Yeah, yeah. We, I was managing Jay in the original flavor, you know, with Clark. That's how I met you. With Clark yeah. Kent actually introduced me to you. Yeah. You know, you was uh, in Atlanta and... Uh, he was kind of wild, like I was wild. He was like high yellow nigga wild, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, yeah, we, we was uh, we were like kindred spirits in that sense, and um, you know, the rest was history. 
Yeah, I think, man, what people don't really realize is the grind, man. And I remember, like you said, DJ Clark Kent saying, you got to meet Dame Dash. You got to meet Jay-Z, original flavor tone hooker, like, you know, Ski. Like, I'm meeting yeah. all these people. And I'm like, they just, they just like me, you know what I'm saying? Literally from the street, making do with what they had. But what impressed me and what I think a lot of these youngins watch, you know, 38% of my followers are like 24 to 35. So they really don't know the history. And this is my job to paint you legends in the proper picture. But, you know, I don't think they really understood the grind. You know what I mean? They didn't, they didn't want to give y'all nothing. Like, Payday didn't really understand it, which is why y'all left Payday. When you started Rockefeller with Jay and, and Biggs, it was, you know, labels shooting y'all down left and right until you got to priority. Talk about that experience a little bit. Well, the problem for them was that, you know, I was a businessman by way of the street already. So I knew when people were trying to play me instinctually. And, you know, a lot of what's going on, like, I know that the release with the, um, the riots is because of internalizing years of racism and having to look the other way. But you know me, I've never had to internalize. I've checked every white man that's tried to play me in front of me, in front of them. So I, I will co-sign that. I will co-sign that. And I still do. That. You know, so I don't feel those frustrations. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm frustrated for our people. But the thing is, initially, white or black in business, they're going to try to play you. And they always would try to play us first, which would make me feel disrespected. And then that would be my reaction. The only way to beat your, someone you consider oppressing you is to hire them. So my thing was, I'm going to just get bigger than you and hire you. And that's what I did. You know, again, they didn't let me in Nell's, the club. I remember saying, I'm going to buy this shit one day and I'm going to fire y'all. And I did those things. So that's the way I've always approached things. Like, yo, I don't want your block. I'm just going to buy your block. Or I build my own. And that's, that's all I know. Dang, you know how, old, how, how, old were, how old were you in that from payday to priority deal? How old were you then? About 21, 22. So you're 22 years old. You got the wherewithal to understand what the business should be. And you do this deal with priority. <laughs> And it was a it was a distribution deal, if I'm not mistaken, correct? It wasn't like a partnership was, that, you, that you used when we went through distribution, pay, correct? No, it was a distribution deal, but it was through Payday. But they was double dipping and trying to get cute. So Payday was trying to take 20%. And then we looking at the under the hood. Actually, because uh, I said make sure it's not like that. I'm not going to get into the whole situation. But actually, Jay noticed it and was like, yo, they double dipping. And I was like, yo, Payday's taking 20% and priority. And then that's when I debted the deal. Because it was supposed to be like Payday was supposed to get three points for doing the deal. And they, you know, it was supposed to be 23 points. It was, it was, it was combined 43 points. You were smiling in my face and trying to rob me. You yeah, know what I mean? No, no question. And the thing is, they always going to try you. Don't take it personal. It's business. Yeah, but I'm going to show you how God works. God taught y'all what y'all needed to know so that when you had the opportunity, you bust that move. You didn't get critical success. I mean, you got critical success early, but you didn't get a lot of, you know, record sales in, in the way that Reasonable Doubt is received as one of the, arguably one of the best rap albums ever. But I look at that well, as the way, I, the, way I always, the, way I, the way I look at that is either way, I'm doing better than anybody in front of me. So Reasonable Doubt, I never measured the success of it by what it sold. It was just a great album, and it was something that will always sell. You know what I'm saying? No question. No but question. I, know, I know what you're saying. Like All that was school. That was learning experience. But my school was different than most. And I didn't take no losses at all. Yeah, no, and I, and I, love, I love it because I remember, you know, coming up to Matt, Maria Davis's Mad Wednesdays and, like, in the 22 Tuesdays, you know what I'm saying, going to D&D &D when y'all was making Reasonable Doubt. And the way that y'all were moving was, coming for what you were coming for and it takes it takes a, you know some people you know late 30s i mean i didn't i didn't really understand my my true superpower to my mid 30s you know but you guys were 21 22 23 years old that's a fucking feat my brother well thank you it's just because we was drug dealers that's what it was so we knew how to spend money and you know we uh i always was art, I, i'm always about architecting for the future 
you know, when I was in the street, my thing was to stay out of jail. I was never reckless. And it always took being strategic. So the thing that we did that most didn't was had those meetings where we had, you know, think tanks. Corporately, that's what you call them. Right. You, 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 look, you look at the Godfather, when they're getting ready to, you know, hit a body or catch one, they sit around and plan that shit out for hours with the consulate. So I always approach things like the Godfather, which when I got into corporate world was the same exact way. Right. Yeah, no, I think um, when I look at like, you know, the release of Rock, you know, well, the beginning of Rockefeller Records and, and your union with your brothers. And then I look at the, you know, the release of Reasonable Doubt. And then literally soon after the Def Jam offer came, which put you guys on the national stage and made you, I mean, the, the underground was on fire. Rockefeller Records was the underground. But I think when you did that deal with Def Jam, the world was like, oh, shit, like, it's time. I was like, it's about time. <laughs> you said it's about time? <laughs> yeah, what took y'all so long, you know? No question. But, you know, it's all part of the game. You got to remember, we was having fun. The shit we was doing and getting paid for, motherfuckers would do for free. And that's how I approached it. So when you don't feel like you're working, you go hard. You know, niggas party hard. You, there's motherfuckers that have discipline to go to the club every motherfucking night. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. get dressed for it every night the whole nine. I just was like, yo, I'm going to monetize that. If I'm going to have the discipline to have fun, I'm going to have the discipline to have make money from it. You yeah. Know? I, so remember every win I remember y'all. Every win when you're young, it's a big win. I remember y'all taking me to uh, Palladium. And this wasn't table service era. This was like, go to the bar. You and go that to that didn't thing. exist back then. Bottle uh, service didn't even exist back then. It, it didn't exist. And I remember y'all saying, here, take this 2500 go to that side of the bar, buy all the champagne, and three, four, five different points on the bar, we bought the champagne out. Then we would take the bottles and go into the crowd. And they used to have like little stanchions that we put the liquor on, but there was no table service, but you still was buying bottles. Well, that was strategic. Our thing was if we bought all the champagne, then no dudes could buy champagne, and so all the girls had to get it from us. Made sense. Yeah. I remember bringing worked, you worked every time. The whole world still does it. Yeah, no. But that question. was our thing: is buy it out, so no one could get champagne unless it was from us. I remember bringing you to Atlanta, Georgia, the Club Kaya, and we it was uh, one of them conferences. You guys ordained me with my Rockefeller jacket, had Big Head Kenny on it, the whole shit. We bought out all the fucking champagne. Performance was crazy, and I feel like Def Jam deal. But I think a blueprint was forming on how people could actually promote, you know what I'm saying, in an effective way and get what you came for. Because that, to be honest, it was on like popcorn after that. I mean, obviously Puff was in the mix. You had other people in the mix, but you were immediately on top of the game. Again, those natural instincts came from hustling. You know, we knew how to be fly in the street and be the most famous people in the street. You know, we had a crew called The Best Out in Harlem. And, you know, fronting was just something that we were really good at. I'm a Harlem cat. And being strategic about fronting and, and also making sure, like, could you imagine if there was Instagram back then? No question. <laughs> you know? So we had to be and have the energy of Instagram without Instagram. We had to have that energy go from state to state. And the way you get that energy, it's like you go to a fight, you know who's the flyest nigga in the fight the whole country comes through, and you could just tell by a certain swag who's doing what. No question. So we knew how to do that. We had no. cameras on us. I'm like, y'all going to let me do this with cameras on us? It's too easy. Because, you know, also the attitude that a cat from Harlem has in that moment is that he's the flyest nigga in the whole world. You know, like, DC, DC niggas wasn't. think that too. Yeah, but y'all was wearing cowboy boots. Nigga, you was wearing ostrich cowboy boots. Don't I got a picture. I posted it yesterday. I ain't never wore no cowboy boots, my nigga. I, I ain't posted never it no yesterday. Boots. Show me wearing some cowboy boots. You and, Jay -Z had on you and Jay-Z had on matching cowboy boots. So put that picture up now. Call me out right now. Hold on. Let me I want to see that. This is not a call-out session. I love you. This is about giving you nah, your Nah, but clock. I want to see that. That's but you true. had on great ostrich you I want to laugh at me if I ever had on a pair of cowboy I'm about to get you right, right now. I want to see that. I'm about to get you right right now. 
Kenny Don't say Curry. no motorcycle boots. I said cowboy boots. The Nigga, these was cow. And I used to fry you and Jay about this shit. Watch. Never, never in your life. What bugging what? right now, heavy? <laughs> Nigga, you what? wore cowboy boots. It wasn't me. Never. Versace only. Don't don't act like my swag wasn't inspiring. Don't do that. You mean Versace like this robe? Yeah, you fly now, baby. Versace you rich. like I my robe? Hold, hold on, here we go. Hold on, wait. Here we go. I'm, uh -oh. I'm rich because I'm happy, not because of the money. No, you've been you've been rich though. Oh, here we go. Now this picture right here, Damon. You want to see something fly? So, where's the cowboy boots? No, you didn't see them. I saw some Jesus like some Christ. funny Nike ears. No, those are Clark Kent ears. Hold on, you see? Can you can you see this picture? Those ain't no cowboy boots. I got on chuckers, nigga. What you talking about? Those Timberlands. Those are cowboy boots. Chuckers, nigga. Those are cowboy boots. No, they not. Your buck. That, that's not me. Number one. That's Put it you. on my foot. That's you. That's a chucker. No, that that's is a, chucker. a ostrich. That's a chucker. That is a ostrich cowboy. You're boot. bugging. Those are chuckers. That's you, right? Or they could be shoes. That's you, right? No, no, no. Those are shoes. Those are shoes. Those are shoes. If those are pants. If those are shoes, they, I had ostrich shoes, but never no, never no boots. All right, I used to call them cowboys. Oh, boys. Those ain't boots. Those, those got laces fried. on them, my nigga. Don't do that. Huh? No, you didn't. I did. I never got fried in my life, nigga. Fuck you talking about. Okay, well, I cut those up. When we Jones back and forth for hours. When we Jones, I win. I never lose a snap fight. You, that's why you so know Damon, I'm the best at that. So Damon, you are acting like those are not ostrich snakeskin boots. I'm telling you they're not. Those could be ostrich shoes with laces, but they definitely not cowboy All right. boots. All right. Well, I'm. I'm off of that. That was at Al Capone's, by the way, I think, in 96. Just know those were some ostrich shoes in 96, yes. <laughs> OK. They, they were ostrich. I just wanted to prove a point. So all there I'm saying. There was no snaps. There was no snaps for those. Where are we at? Where were we at in the conversation, Dan? I don't know. Um, Let me, I don't know. Oh, oh I hear we, here we're I talk, we were talking about the promotion and having the ability to market by using the skills that I learned from fronting in the street. Yes. That's what you're talking yes. about. So yes, so 19, I wanted to go into this because I think when I used to talk to you, you used to have these grand thoughts, even before they happened, movies, uh, do. liquor, everything. And so I'm, I'm, I'm bugging because when In My Lifetime came out in 97, right? This is a year after Reasonable Doubt. You guys did Streets is Watching. Same year is when I met uh, AZ, the real AZ. And I brought him to meet y'all, or meet you. I think, I think Jay and Biggs was there. Uh, Jay, you had John Street, uh, John Street address in 97, right? Who? You had the John, John Street address in 97, right? I don't remember the years, bro, but yeah, it was back then. Anyway, I remember, I remember bringing him to see you because 97, you guys did Streets watching, but you also got introduced with me, I, I think you knew him, obviously, because he's from Harlem. But well, I wanted to. I, w I was looking to do the movie, and you knew I wanted to do the movie, and you found him. Yeah, because he came. Shep, Shep from Harlem came to my office with the nigga, and he came to the. Room. I was like, no, these niggas not gonna understand it. Let me take you to Damon dashing them down on John Street. But anyway, I love that you started with Streets and Watching because you used the album in my lifetime as the soundtrack, and that for me, visually for us, shit wasn't happening like that. Niggas was doing long videos and shit like that, but that was the first of its kind. How was that making that? It was funny. Well, what had happened was uh, Hype had gaffled us into doing this stupid-ass video, Sunshine, and everybody was laughing at us. And Lior was like, yo, you cold. We ain't cutting no more checks. I was like, yo, I'm buying us out of this, comp this fucking contract. Fuck you. And we went and used our own money, made the B-size. I said, look, niggas think the shiny shoot thing and the balloons was funny. I want the B-sides and I just want guns ringing. I did, that's all I wanted. And that's what I wanted to see. And then as I approached it and looked at it, I was like, you know, who's the biggest movie star or rather music uh, 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 music artist on the planet? Right. And at the time it was Elvis and he made movies. He was the biggest movie star. Prince made movies. Uh, Michael Jackson made movies. Diana Ross made movies. Uh, Pink Floyd made movies. So it only made logical sense to make movies. And that's really what broke us because they didn't really know who we were and what we represented other than our core. Right. We were talking directly. We were actually pitching music hand to hand, going into those markets, performing and hanging out with everyone that was hustling in every market. That was our consumer.
And we were happy with that, where we were from. I, we knew that was the first step was to build the foundation. Right. You know, we just, I just knew, I just knew it was just like, my thing was back then being as arrogant as I am and was, is that I'm better than everybody at everything. So you can't make better music than me. You can't, you're not fresher than me. You can't make better movies than me. So why should I buy it from you when I can make it myself? Why should you be telling me what to do when I know how to do it myself? And that was the same reason why I started the television network and the streaming service 10 it's years ago. Now, right? It's come to fruition now. You know, it's always been about cut out the middleman and be the plug for me. And you see how I treat people that pretend they the plug. They not the plug. And they pretend they the plug. And then they get very embarrassed and upset when I expose them in front of the people that they are trying to pretend there's something they're not. Right. And that was what people didn't like, my laughter. Right. No one likes my laughter because I'm laughing at people that are pretending. Yeah, your, your laughter can be intimidating. So I, I want to say this, man. 98, volume two, Hard Knock Life comes out. And you finally sell the amounts of records your hard work had earned. How did that feel, man, to like bust that five million mark on Hard Knock Life and finally the shit just was the, the biggest shit on the planet? It wasn't enough. I wanted 10. It didn't make enough money and it was temporary. I didn't like it. Really? Yeah. I mean, it felt good to get there, but it made me see that I, ha I wasn't really where I wanted to be. Because it was like, this is, where, this is what it's like to do that. Where's the, where's the money? And it wasn't there like that. You know, it was just being famous. But to us, though, Dame, like outside looking in, although we, you know, clearly friends. It was a big deal. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. Yeah, it like, party. bro, that was but, legendary. You got to remember something. Every time I get a check, and, it's, and, and it, I, I think I can get a bigger one. So it just goes right back in the street. So once we do that, my, my, my brain turns into future. Like, this can't be the best times. That To me, the scary thing is for things to be the best in that moment. That can't be the best. Right. It got to get better for me. Every day got to be better. I got to evolve. So I'm like, yo, this is $5 million. I can't wait to see with 10. That's why we made up the, um, that's, that I made up the thing. That this shit. Yeah. This sign right here, that, that meant the diamond. That just meant we were going to sell 10 million records, which we never did. That's crazy. But what you did, <laughs> all it was. But what you did do is put one of the best teams in rap together ever. Because in 2000, Beanie Siegel came out with the truth. And I felt like the addition of New York, and then now you have Philly with Beans and the state property crew, that was legendary, bro. Because you also, you know, put the whole team on, man. What was that like? Because I know Beanie and you had... I mean, you, you, you were rolled thick as thieves through his whole trial. You know, you were there the entire time. Well, Did you hear me? the thing is, um, the thing is, you can hear me? Yeah. The thing is, you know, my thing was to take it over state by state and get with the best. And the thing is, when I get with someone, a crew, it does become a brotherhood. It becomes a lifestyle. So you also inherit all the issues that they have as well. So it was fun, but part of the experience was, you know, going to court a lot and a lot of, you know, that's why I started calling them motherfucking state property was because they was always in jail. Right. You know, and I couldn't keep them out. Wow. You know, so it, it becomes frustrating when you can see the future for somebody that they don't see for themselves and they choose other dumb shit. And, you know, it's like, damn, I be, I'm like, I hope I'm not wasting my time. You know what I mean? Right. But the whole movement, it was meant to make them as powerful as me. It was all meant to make everyone an equal. And, and that was always my thing. I don't really like being the boss. I just like owning my own. But I don't want to be the boss of a bunch of other dudes because it comes with their motherfucking problems and entitlements and all the things that come with that. You know, moving when they want. And, you know, it's just a lot of emotional shit. Right. That a man doesn't want to deal with, with another man all the time. Right. You know, I'm not going to pay more attention to another man than I'm going to pay to my children. I don't give a fuck how much money they're going to be making. Me. I'm just not doing it. So, you know, it was great because I was able to put them in that program. Like, yo, make a movie, make a clothing line. You'll be a general. That was why I, that dumb shit happened when I made everyone a vice president. And then fucking, you know, I made Beanie and Cam a vice president. And host. It had nothing to do with the label. It just meant that you have your own label. It didn't mean you talk to anybody. Right. But everyone got butt hurt over it. And that's when I was like, forget it. I'm done.
Right. Let me I ask will, you this I question. Do what I got to do. But I, I believe you're a franchise maker. Um, you know, when you sign a property, you you know, you gave Bill, Beanie this opportunity. You then signed the entire state property. You made two movies. Um, the whole dip set, too. Yeah, no, I'm saying I'm getting a dip set. But then, you you know, you these movies were crucial because state property, one, is a hood classic, without question. You know what I'm saying? State property, two. I, actually, wasn't I supposed to have a dress shirt mafia part in there in state property, too? Was, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I, probably you and Ryan. But I remember you having these franchise thoughts for your artists, putting them in position to be bigger than just the music. And then that leads me to 2002, which was a year like no other for you. You not only came out with the State Property movie, you came out with Paid in Full, you signed Cameron and the Diplomats, uh, we signed ODB right after and had the VH1 show on parole with ODB. So let me just back up, we saw, oh, MOP was signed, but let me take it back. How was that Paid in Full movie for you? Because that was your era, that was your hood, what was it like to tell that story? Because that is ultimately a hood classic, for sure. A movie classic. It was frustrating as fuck. <laughs> Come on, Dame. I need you to find some joy in this interview, please. I just need you to be happy a little no, bit. No, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, because the thing about it, what you have to understand is all these great things that were done came with fight and struggle. None of it was not a war, you know? So in, in, in that, I had to fight the Weinsteins. I had to fight Merrimax. I had to fight niggas in the street. I had to put hands on niggas. I got sued, all type of shit. And I had to fight to get reshoots. I had to chase this nigga Harvey Weinstein around the world to get that shit right. And wow. then when they put it out, the way it got put out, I, I was frustrated with the way they put it out. They put it in a limited amount of theaters. They promised me that if it performed well, had a good per screen average, that they would put it in more theaters. These niggas ain't do none of that shit. So I'm always fighting. I remember. So you, you gotta remember, every, every time you say franchise, start new business, that means start new war. So I'm having four or five wars at one time. And so when I'm when when is when when I'm starting something, when I'm finishing something, I'm starting something new. You know, I was always uptight because I someone was always trying to play me. So and that shit gets frustrating. That's why I just decided to be Cuba and do everything on my own. No, I get it. I get it. But I, I remember specifically walking down Broadway. You pulled up on me. Uh, you were like, "Yo, where you going, big head?" I was like, "I'm I'm headed over to." He said, "Yo, come on with me. We're going to this premiere." I get in the car, it's the premiere paid in full. And I'm like, oh shit, like we go to the joint, I forgot it's 42nd Street or something. We walk crowd everywhere, we walk in and mind you, I hadn't seen you regularly in a while and we watched the movie. I'm having no idea the movie's done because you never gave me my part, but I'm, I'm not mad. But like, I'm like, yo, like this nigga made the movie. Like this is the fucking movie. And it was phenomenal. But I have, I have like the ultimate respect because I feel like you know, we talk about things in life, what we want to do, we desire to do our dreams, and then there are those of us who actually make it happen. And you brought that to the screen, regardless of Harvey did, whatever he did, what it did. Bro, today- Everything in my life is a dream come true. Yeah, today though, I just want to finish my statement. Today, that is one of the most watched movies on the planet, it is the most memed probably movie out. Like that movie is a classic. So congratulations on that. I just wanted to- Give you those flowers. Thank you, bro. Yeah, man. Thank you. Good times, man. I mean, again, those are great times. But what you have to understand is I can now compare life then to life now. And I'm having a such, since I've gotten away from that life, my life has been so much more happier. Well, I want you to be happy, but I don't want to, I don't want to leave the air yet. I, I'm a, I want to get into everything new. Let me finish my thing because I'm almost finished with Rockefeller. I feel like around that time you made Cam and Beanie VPs, you had state property, you had the diplomats. It was coming to work every day. You didn't know what was happening. Like it was so much shit going on and people and their energies. And I even remember going on tour. You know, I, I created that the weekend for us in Virginia and Kanye performed and we went on tour with B or BT had the shit with Kanye. I mean, we were doing so much shit, but it was so hectic. And I want to point something out. That era of Rockefeller was the biggest era ever. You had not only Jay selling millions of albums, because he kept threatening to retire, so I'm assuming you had to get on your horse. Cameron, Platinum, Beanie never went Platinum, but the energy around state property and what, 
you know, was going on with the movies, etc. You had Peyton Full. Then, like I said, I felt like giving me anxiety, man. No, it, 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 me gave anxiety. Me, it gave me anxiety because you didn't know if he was fighting when you came to work. You didn't know what was going on. But yeah, it was. But I want to say this. I feel like when Kanye West released College Dropout, which you were a huge champion of, um, I feel like when that came, he came out, that was the end of Rockefeller. No, nah, that wasn't the end of Rockefeller. I, I, can I tell you why? Mm -hmm. It was 2004, and I felt like because Jay kept saying he was going to retire, everybody was, you know, everything was shooting on all cylinders. It wasn't yeah. nothing else to fucking do. You was taking us, me and you was going to Europe every two weeks. You had all nobody, the At that time, nobody cared if Jay was going to retire. He was like, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm saying, but you were preparing, you were fortifying the label. Am I not right? You, this we, was, we was fortified, bro. We was A1. I had everything set up. I was still, again, it was like fighting a fight for no reason. That's what I'm saying. It was like I had everything set up, and then niggas just fucked it all up. And everybody did it to themselves. It's, it's just frustrating, you know? And that's what I'm saying is what people have to understand, those great are, are great accomplishments. I had, you know, fun doing everything I've ever done, no regrets at all. But that wasn't real life. Because despite all of that shit we was doing, the money was not what it was looking like. Niggas wasn't getting money like that. And I didn't like that. I don't like looking like I got more than I got, period. And that, it was too much expectation, too much work, and not enough yield. What, what That's was, what it was for me. What was the year the Death of a Dynasty the parody movie came out. I don't be remembering the years, but that's the thing is I made the movie because I knew it was happening and I, th I thought the shit was funny. But I'm like, yo, I'm ready to get out of here anyway. Y you knew I was out. I, I hated that life, bro. I don't like that life being around phony motherfuckers, niggas being tough all day, and then when you fucking help somebody, they mad at you for it. You set shit up for them and then they fuck it up, and they don't even understand the work you do in setting it up. That's why I invest in me, you know. And I think you're a person that has understood that because your company says burns. I don't see you working for nobody no more. You might be an independent, but you have your own. You know? It's well, I, I want to give you the, I want to give I want to give you these flowers too. You fought for yours. You know, I still do. We, we, well, I'm, can I get my statement off, Taurus? My point is, you fought for yours, and although we've all had issues in the past. You fought for your people. Like, when you said you were going to do something, you did it. When people didn't believe in Jay, you fought. When people was, you know, Rock Aware was whatever, and you wanted to do deals, you fought the Russians and made them see your vision. When you wanted to do movies, you fought the Weinsteins. I applaud you for fighting, Dame. I just want you to be, I want you to be aware of your, your light and what is giving entrepreneurs, even like myself, again, We've had our times, but like I respect every moment because it taught me lessons that I needed to have the RNS, to have Studio 43, to, to have the Kenny Burns show. Um, so I just want I want you to out I, I wanna hug you, no homo, but I'm sorry, did I say that pause or whatever you say. But you know, I just I don't I don't like that you seem so mad. I'm not mad, bro. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. I'm giving you About the reality. Yeah. I'm giving you the reality of why I left. You understand? So you have to understand, I am telling people, don't go that route. Invest in yourself. Because when it looks like it's so much fun, it's not. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit. And I also want you to realize something, bro. And I appreciate you saying the things you're saying. The black culture has made sure that I get my roses every day. I get celebrated every single day, and I never have not. So that's another thing with this narrative. They try to make people look like they don't get appreciated. I get appreciated every single time I walk outside since Rockefeller. Right. I've never had anybody disrespect me, ever. Nothing but respect. And the things they respect me for are the things that I'm currently doing for the culture. And that's what I love. I love when people be like, yo, I read Culture Vultures. And I love the programming you're doing. And I love that you're a vegan. And I love that every experience that you learned from when you were young, this is what you're supposed to look like, an OG, when you're in hip hop, when you invest in yourself. 
despite what everyone says, I'm the happiest one out of everybody. Don't ever make me look salty. But if I, if somebody robs me, when we talk about it, this is the energy you're going to have. Right. But let's talk about the last 10. Let me show you something, Kenny. Now, the whole world, the, there's a, like whatever the perception is, while I've been gone from Rockefeller, I got magazines worth of shit that I've been doing and making the DNA of the world all around the world with so many other artists and art galleries. And that's Crit and that's Bum B. And that's been, and that's um 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 Eric Badu and the cool kids. This I was with them all before. Yeah. I'm DNA and everything. Forget like Rockefeller was cool, but look at this shit. Look at that shit. This is the shit they wasn't talking about. I'm running around the world. You know, sponsored. You know what I mean? Yeah. I th th I did that. Like I did Rockefeller for 10 years, but then I went. And opened up galleries around the world for D ten years. Yeah, the DD with niggas was on called? like Wiz Khalifa, and, and and currency, like so many different people and had a ball. So I just think that people should understand where the real wealth was for me was when I became independent. And since I left Rockefeller, I never had an office again. I only had buildings. I only had buildings in Tribeca since then, and buildings in the Lower East Side, and buildings in Burbank like I have now. And now I don't have to rent out equipment to make videos. I own all the equipment and I make movies. So I'm selling, trust me on that. It ain't no anger. Yeah. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Aaliyah gave me this, you remember that? Oh man, God rest her soul. But you remember that? Yeah. I remember that from the black yeah. door. Yeah, she gave me that. See, yo, yo, you know what I mean? it's called so, DD. What's the new studio, what's the new studio called? DD what? It's Dame Dash Studios. You can get the app, download it right now. 24 hours worth of program with a purpose. Not not programming, but deprogramming. You know, I got gangster shit, OG stories, but I also have health as well. With wifey cooking healthy food for me like she do every day. Always. Always. Yes, I am. And then we have, you know, script. Kill. We got our movies honor up. We got... The, the, the politics on there. We got uh, therapy on there. We got the Bishop Yah Squad on there. I got 90 black principals um, off school grounds on there. All this is about us teaching each other how to be better, how to not have to be so frustrated. Like, my fight for racism is to be independent and punish whoever punished my culture every day. And y'all know I do that. Niggas been calling me crazy for that. And everybody that right. you called out fighting Weinstein's, look where we at now. Everyone y'all was saying I was crazy for fighting back then, they all now look at him. When I was everything I was saying for everybody to do back then, now look at everybody. So I'm that celebrates me every day to see that everything I said did not go in vain. That independence is now the cool shit and not the whack shit. I know I had something to do with that. I know I had something to do with programming changes. I know I had something to do with kicking Leo out of music. I know I had something to do with all of that. I make people that disrespected us because they can't disrespect me. But when I see them disrespect me, I know they're disrespecting y'all and I punish them for y'all. And you've seen me do it. And I'm not unhappy to do it. I'll be that guy. And you also see I fight with nobody behind me. Period. Yeah. And I'm You're a brave here. motherfucker, for sure. I'm not brave. These niggas is pussy. I'm not scared of nobody. You, it, I'm not it, scared of these people. You are I'm not brave. Scared of people uh -huh. that oppress us. You know I'm with you. You're brave, nigga. You you have a heart of a lion. I'm giving you. I'm giving you those flowers. Thank you. No, I'm just saying. I'm not. I just think that should be the norm. Yeah. I don't think that takes bravery. I just think that's respect for yourself. Well, that makes you special, Damon. That makes you. Special. And that's crazy that that makes me special to me. No, but 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 listen, man, it's it's fine. You you could be the leader no, in I'm that not mad, category. Bro. Yeah. Yo, look, ask my girl, right? How? Where's she at? Ask her how or what percentage of the day am I mad? It's probably she at? Rocky. <laughs> ask, ask her. Rocky. Oh, if I'm mad, how what percentage of the day am I mad? <laughs> we have fun every day. I can't be mad. I got. Four puppies, you know what I'm saying? My life is Yo, great. Yo, Dave, I want I, 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 I want to tell I want to tell a funny story. Can you stop moving? I need you to stay still. 
I, I was going to look tell, at the Rocky. I want to tell this funny story. I was at the Revolt offices. I forgot what year this was. I'm at the Revolt offices. I'm in, I'm in the office. You came to see me, right? But I think you went to Puff. You came to see us or me or something, but you went to the Coleman nah. office instead of the Revolt office. No, nah, I went to see Puff. Okay, so I got a call, though, right? <laughs> and it was like, yo, Dame Dash is over here, and, and Puff and him, is, is, you got to get over here ASAP. I'm like, what happened? What? He's coming to see me at Revolt, or he's coming to Revolt. No, he's at the project hey, right hey, now. Hey, Kenny, Kenny, you remember Puff was a little sensitive about that situation. Wait, 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 Dave. All right. I got to tell, tell the funny part. I got to tell the funny part. So <laughs> I, rushed across, I rushed across the city, right? So I get to the fucking thing. All I heard was, oh, da, da, da. all I heard was like, you know, back and forth. I come into the office, y'all. Dame is standing there with his fucking puppy <laughs> in his hand. <laughs> and he's telling... He's telling Puff, yo, nigga, you need a fucking puppy, nigga. You, you need a puppy. Your whole anger issue. And Dame, I swear to God, Puff is yelling to the top of his lungs. This nigga Dame is talking calm as shit with a puppy in his hand. Like, you need to calm down, B. You need a fucking puppy. <laughs> and uh, that shit has me dying, nigga. Yeah, that, it's on tape, ain't it? He taped it. I think he did tell you he won't let that shit out because you were too calm. He was looking like a, a crazed lunatic. And you're holding I the puppy. The I got the tape. Oh, I got to see that. Please send that. No, and big shout out to D-Rock. Who? It was me, you, D-Rock, and him. Yeah, y'all called security on me, motherfuckers. Who did? I called D-Rock. D-Rock was security. I'm like, for real? No. <laughs> no, no. Right I don't know nothing about that. I know they called nah, me. You know what? Call. I'm not, I'm not, you know what? I'm not doing this. <laughs> what? I'm now, nah, because remember, he got sensitive over it. So I, no, I, no, I, I'm just remembering the story. I'm not trying to get you caught on tape. You got it on tape. I'm not no, no, I, I don't care about that. I'm just saying, you know, he was, he was kind of sensitive that we were discussing it, and, you know, he don't want to discuss things like that in public. But, but you mentioned your puppies, man. You mentioned vegan. I did. Puppies is, puppies is important, bro. No, bro, I, I, think oh, that, I think that brought you I think that brought you a lot of peace, too, man, because, you. I mean, you love your puppies, dog. You hold your logo. Let's go puppy. I mean, you got a whole thing. I, I love I love the love, bro. That's that's what it's all about is loving, you know. And you have to fight for love, so people mistake your anger sometimes. It's really you protecting what you love, and that's that. You know, you're not to, when you do love, you, that comes with 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 fighting because you have to protect it with everything. And I love I just love that everything I do is for others. If you look at my my track record, I'm gangster love. That's what I do. Gangster love. How's the how's the vegan shit going, bro? I can't I can't. I'm trying. To, I try to get closer and closer to it but every time i get close i need some chicken tenders well for me you know i just can't eat nothing that got doodle in it you know what i'm saying it's disgusting and then karmically i feel bad because it's not necessary you know what i mean if i ain't got to kill like it says in the bible thou shalt not kill it don't say thou shalt not just kill humans you know it's a means to an end so I just feel karmically like it's wrong to kill if we don't have to. I be feeling bad about my sneakers and shit. But it's also disgusting. You know, shit got doodle in it. Like, you know how much doodle is in chicken? 100% of chicken has fecal on it. 100. It's too dis... Because think about it, right? When you bust the shrimp's back and that little line, that's doodle. Now, imagine busting a cow or busting a chicken, how much shit is in it. And it all goes in the same blender. 88% of meat uh, uh, has fecal on it, and then it has to be traveled like rats to be running around, bro. Anything that has rat hair tolerance, I can't fuck with it. So there's like, uh, uh, you can have this much pus, this much rat hair, and this much doodle. Th those things I'm not fucking with. If I see doodle on my plate, I'm not eating anything else on that plate. So I just think it's nasty. All right. That's a hell of a way to get a motherfucker to go vegan. All right. The, the last question, Damon, and you, you know, you are an icon. You are a motivating leader in the community. Talk about, you, you have, you know, www.dame-studios.com, correct? Dame-studios. Dame-studios.com. Yeah. And so, also, I'm over, also, I'm over the air in Charlotte. I'm about to uh, go over the air in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, so you, you get radio show? Not no 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 antenna television like okay. I bounced at it yeah like your man like your man yeah Ryan yeah I know the game I know it so it's just renting the motherfucking signals and getting the ad revs when you did that's so dope. I rented the signal 
and my shit beams 24 hours. I got a real network, bro. My shit is real. Congratulations, brother. So we got Dame Dash Studios. Uh, what else we got? The platform for us. Do we have any platforms for us where we can say our own news? Do we have one? I'm with you, brother. No, I'm just asking. I'm not I, mad. Not, don't, not. don't take my energy as a, as a man. No, nah, no. Nah. I, I, um, so we need I to understand that the, 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 what controls us is entertainment. What controls us is what gets distributed on a national level over and over again. We have no news. So every time we look at a TV screen, it's not what behooves us. It's always what behooves them. It's the news they want us to hear. When do we get to make our black politicians famous when we want to? Why does Donald Trump have to yell at one of us for us to be famous at the Black Caucus? So my thing is, I'm going to provide a platform for us to give our news, our therapy, our education, our entertainment, our way, and we eat. They don't, they don't need to eat off us no more. We keep giving it to them. And we be wondering why niggas is mad. I, this is my revolution every day. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let me send you this real quick. What you sending me? Hold on. What, what, what is he doing? He's texting me. He's texting me during the, the interview, guys. Dame Dash. You just you just stop the whole you just stop the whole live. Hello, you text me. Yeah, I just texted you my um my album my um I just texted you. We should text an old album, but I just texted you hustlings in my DNA. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out. Can you play it? Can you play it? I can't play it now because it's on my phone. Well, can you send it to somebody and then play it um, on your show? You can send it to my email right now and I can play it. Nicolette, can you send it to his email? I gave you my email and your text. I don't want to give it over the live. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Hold on. Yo, he's really pausing. <laughs> ah! Hold on. Yo, also, I'm about to shoot a zombie movie Um, uh, in about two weeks. You about to shoot a zombie movie in L.A.? Yeah. I'm prepping it now. Did, did you see Dress to Kill? Huh? No, I see you promotion for it. I'm going to watch. Damn, you ain't watch it? God, I ain't watch it yet. It's been a pandemic. I've been fucking overwhelmed. Oh, watch speaking of me. What else speak, 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 speaking of this, I, um, I was just having a conversation with Jessica about that because I'm getting so many offers for TKBS, but I'm like, damn, I want to monetize my own shit. And make my own, I think. But we're, yeah, we're, we're um, so, yeah. Shoot it and syndicate it. Facts. Do what Byron Allen did. Shoot it. Byron Allen got a bag. Yeah, but he, that's how we did it. With bullshit fucking, not no disrespect, but it's programming. You know, just fucking rents shit at six in the morning. And does it nationally, just like Judge Judy and Oprah. It's all syndication. Did she send it yet? You sent it? Did she, she just send what it. you want me to play? She just sent it? Yeah. 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 Also, I did a Rocky series, too, so you can see the making of every record. 20 minutes. I'm on my second episode. What, what is she sending me so I know what I'm, what I'm playing? That's my rock album. But if you wanted to hear Hustlings in My DNA, um, you could uh, play Hustlings in My DNA because you said that. And I was like, yo, that's really a record. Like I, I think it. I think you, y'all would be like, yo, you making an album? I thought everybody would want to be. I'll be acting like it's not happening. That's, but that's not hustles in my DNA. But that's. You never been a boss. You never had boss problems. What I can say is this. No, I'm gonna talk shit on the record. Go to hustles in my DNA. This one's a little aggressive. That's in the same email she said. Yeah, it's in the same. It's a it's a whole album. Hustle. That's the first song. Hustle DNA, DNA featuring. It's called DNA. Yeah. Featuring Gov. Good time. The, yeah. Featuring the Gov. Fe he's a senator. It says featuring oh, Gov. My great -grandfather, he's a senator. Oh. Oh. It is. 
Oh, the album's on Spotify, too. So that's not it? That's DNA it. DNA featuring the gun? That is it. That's it. Oh. Play it. That was it. Oh. And that gives you independence. You spit my DNA. I know how to hustle. I know how to flip. Hustlers in my DNA. Hustlers in my DNA. What's that guitar, bro? Cash, ain't nobody better than guitar on the planet. That's the center of the rapper. That's you? <laughs> That's the center of the rapper, Eddie Middleton. I was like, I need a verse. You're passing laws too, you out there fighting for it. See, I'm trying to make these kind of big celebrities right now, our real heroes. When they get that platform, they really have something to say. You know? You said you're trying to what? I'm trying to make the proper people famous right now. The ones that are really fighting for us. You know what I'm saying? So that when they get the platform, they're really saying something and really doing something. Too many people, to me, don't use their celebrity. They get there and they just do what they got to do to stay there. I do what I got to do to fix shit when I get my platforms. That's what I do. And I want to empower other people that do that. That's why I work with 90 black principles because nobody celebrates that we even have 90 black principles that's out there every day, that kid. That's why I, 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 I talk every day with a bishop, Bishop Pinnell, because his take on religion comes from our perspective. Our that's point. who you put me on the phone with? Yeah, he's off the hook, bro. You should have seen that, that conversation I had yesterday. Mm -hmm. We had cops on the phone, on, on, the, on the Zoom, feds. We had therapists, we had looters, we had bishops, we had senators, we had CEOs, and we did therapy. And we talked. Yeah, yeah there you go. You know, mental, huh? mental, health, mental health is a big deal. Oh, oh, at the, at the door? At our house? Oh, shit, I might have gave him... Wait, wait, wait. What happened? Is everything all right, champ? You all right? What? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. T uh, yeah, tell him to meet him downstairs. Tell him to come in. I'm, I'm meet him downstairs. Okay. Just let me get, let me get the. I just, get, I, I just want to give you your props, man. Take you down. I appreciate you, lane. bro. I, I am happy that you gave our followers some some gems to live by. You are a true independent. You are necessary, man. I wish you nothing but the best, Dan. I appreciate it. Let's just keep supporting each other. Make healthy app aspirational. We need some mental help. Go get it. Let's eat healthy. Let's fucking invest in our families and our future and understand where real wealth is. It's happiness, having fun, taking care of your kids and your woman, and making sure that the people you love don't have to go through the same struggles that you go through. And if they are, then you got to get your life together. All right. Period. I appreciate your time, Dan. My nigga, love you. All right, my nigga, love you too. Play my album, man. I will, brother. One time for Damon Dash, ladies and gentlemen. I think you gotta, uh, yeah, I think you gotta salute him and his thought process. Facts. Independent is the way to go. That's the way to see all your money. And when he said doo doo on the plate, it really got me thinking about some vegan shit, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. That motherfucker's funny, man. But salute the king. Uh, listen, be safe. Tomorrow, lean away. It's going to be special. All right? I love y'all. Peace.